Hello everyone, it's Farm Sim Guy here. Hope you're all doing well. Today we're back with another quick cosplay tutorial. I got a comment on my forage trailer cosplay vid from a long time ago now uh, from Raven's Cross Model Railway who asked if we could show how to use cosplay for bailing. So that's what we're going to do today. So we've got some equipment lined up. We've got the combine here, but also I'm going to show it for grass as well so over here we've got a ready cut field grass so we're going to windrow that up into rows and then we're going to show how you can pick it up with the baler as well now of course in fs19 we did have a setting for baling for course play later on in the game but in fs22 it hasn't arrived yet so this is a bit of a workaround for it and for me this works really really well i've never really had any issues with this it's, it's quite Quite easy to set up and uh, extremely uh, easy to get your bales off the field with. So without further ado, let's jump in. And now I'm going to start with the combine because that's what Ravens Cross asked for. But secondary, we're going to jump into the grass field as well. So first and foremost, we have our combine. And what we need to do here is set up a standard course play course. So we'll jump in, we'll move it over to the edge of the field and we'll get things started. So as per usual, I'm just going to cut a manual edge out here. So we've got a little bit of space to work with, and then I'm going to jump into my course play menu. Um, we're going to click on course play here. I'm going to do create job. Um, it's selected the boundary of the field already, which is great. Now I would say if you haven't used course play before, go and check out my beginner's guides first and foremost. They will help you a lot. Um, so I'm assuming that you have done that and you know the basics of course play here. Uh, what we're going to do is open close course generator. Um, so it's got the working width, 13.5 meters. One tool, we're going to do a couple of headlands. We're always worth doing a couple of headlands. Um, everything else we're just going to leave as the default settings. And we're going to click generate field work course. Now if we go back out, you can see we have our two headlands and our course all set up there. Now I'm going to go back out see our start point here we've got to make sure we switch to first waypoint here uh, and the other thing we need to do is make sure we are set to have our um, straw swath on which is by default the comma button now you can also it's not actually showing up um, on the menu here because um, th there's too many things on there so it's sometimes hidden so comma is your default you can also go into the vehicle settings in course play which is this icon here and you can set it there as well so straw swath at the moment is activated but you can turn it to disabled or deactivated now actually for bailing if you wanted to you could disable the headlands which means that you won't have any issues with bales uh, getting stuck when you're uh, bailing in the field but for now we're just going to go with activated and go back to the game so we are all set up now First waypoint is selected. We are just going to hit the go button. We're just going to wait a minute and make sure that we see the straw swath. And there it is. And we are good to go. Right. We're going to leave the combine doing its thing. Um, and we are going to jump in. We're going to make a save here because this is the important bit. Now, what will happen with the baler is we are going to use the combine course for the baler. And the reason for that is if I just go vertical like this you can see we've got a 13.5 meter head on the combine here and it's spitting out the straw swath directly in the center of that so again if we use this course for our baler course play is going to think that the baler is 13.5 meters wide and therefore center the tractor in the middle of the course ensuring that we pick up the swath that's there simple as that so the key for this is make sure you save your course so you can load it up with a baler. So to do that, you can go into this icon here and we're going to create a folder first for field five. So now we're going to save our course. So we're going to click save course, activate. We're going to call it combine. Nice and simple for now. Um, okay, that, so we have our combine course here. Then we can go back out to combine. Now, I'm only saving that because if you want to come back to the game in the future, 
um, and you want to reuse this course it's good to save it of course now with course play in FS22 you have this copy button down here which I can click on like so and it's copying course combine here so we've now got that course copied so if I tabbed over to a baler we should be able to just paste that course and it would put it straight into the bale. So we're going to use the Chrome Big Bale um, for that field. And as you can see, we now have a paste icon down here, Copy Course Combine. So if I click that, you can see actually in the minimap down there, but actually if we jump into the main map, you'll be able to see that too. So there you go. We're in our John Deere here and you can see it's copied the Combine course from the Combine. So again, if you're having a gameplay session where you know you're going to feel, finish the field in that session, you can just copy the course over, you don't need to save it to course play. So now we wait a little bit because the combine's got to cut the field, um, but it shouldn't take too long. And then we'll be back and we'll be able to start up our baler. Right, there we go. Field done. You can see the two headlands and then the up and down rows in the middle. It's actually quite a good test because the headlands and the, and the up and down rows are slightly different angles which is a really good way of showing you how we're, how good this actually works so we're just going to park the combine over here now we don't need it again we have got a little bit of wheat in the corners here because we did rounded edges we were just doing it quickly to get the field cut to be honest um, and it's all about the baling here so let's jump in our big square baler um, and I'll show you how simple this is literally we're going to switch on course play now because we've copied the course over it's just a case of switching on uh, course play and letting it run now it will be interesting on some of the corners because you maybe saw with the combine there as it goes around the corners it's not an accurate turn it doesn't uh, do a nice uniform 90 degree turn it does kind of push it outwards slightly um, so it might not be super accurate again if you were doing this in person you might want to go back and pick up bits but um, the fact that you can leave a baler to run and just do its thing is great so there's a the start point Let's pull up course play. Let's make sure it's on first waypoint. We've got the course loaded combine. Um, we can see our course. In fact, we'll turn it on full just for a second so you can see where the course is and you can see the baler following it. Um, so we're just going to hit the go button. There we go. Everything unfolded. Now we've picked the square baler for this field and we do have the round baler for the next field. But there we go. Um, pick up header drop down and there was my point as the combine turns it kind of throws the swath out so you might want to go back at the end and pick those up but in general once you're onto these kind of things you can see the tractor is running directly in the middle of that course now certain balers have particularly narrow pickups as well so you can see we've already left a couple of just tiny bits behind there and again on the corners we're going to have a little bit of an issue but not too bad and um, there you go. That is course play running very comfortably with a baler. Now, uh, something I'm going to point out when we do the wind rowing on the grass field. Because you're doing the headlands first, there is a slight issue, potentially, that um, as you're doing your up and down rows, there will be bales on the headland that you've already bailed that um, get in your way. Um, unfortunately, because combines, you have to do the headlands first to get into the field. That's a little bit of an occupational hazard with this. Now, you could have somebody going around and picking them up uh, as they're being uh, ejected from the baler. Uh, and you could do that, of course, because you've got course play running with the baler. Um, alternatively, um, you might just want to take your chances and hopefully they just don't align with the, uh, with the end row. So, for example, there you go. There's one in line with an end row. Now, this is the outside uh, row, so uh, it might be all right here. But when we do that second headland there, you could end up with some issues but in principle it still does work very very well and very very accurately of course if you've not done the rounded corners as well and gone for the uh, square corners and squared things off a little bit more um, that would have given you a different result as well so we'll leave this to go and uh, we'll come back nearer the end and see how it's getting on so this is interesting look how close that bale is to uh, getting in the way now to all intents and purposes it's not really an issue it would probably just get nudged out of the way by the front wheels or the weights but um, it's just something to watch out for um, but there we go on the up and down rows now and you can see how clean it is on the field um, you can see some of the the corners on the headlands there still 
uh, showing, but uh, once you get into the up and down rows, uh, no straw being missed at all. And actually, if you top those bits on the end rows up in the corners, they probably account for just a couple of percent of a bale anyway, so um, probably okay to leave them, but entirely up to you. You can go and pick them up afterwards if you want. Now, we've got another bale here in the middle, um, so it's not going to get in the way, but uh, this will just turn onto the next end row. Simple as that. We are just going up and down now until it's done. This is all course play. I'm not driving anything here. Literally moving the camera around is the only thing I'm doing. And uh, course play is doing all the hard work. Right, here we go. We're on our last pass here. And as you can see, we have a bale directly in front of us. So I'd like to think this will just get nudged out of the way or pushed along for a bit. Usually they get out of the way pretty quickly. Um... But it is, it is something you need to be mindful of. And actually something I'll show you a solution for when we do the grass field. Because there is another way around this. Um, this is getting stuck on the front wheels there. But it's not causing any issues. But yeah, a little bit annoying if you have to deal with it. It's going to get moved out of the way just now as we come to the end as well. There we go. There we go. We'll just unload those bales there. We are done. Now, like I said, this would be your opportunity to tidy up the edges if you wanted to. But in principle, if you look back over the field here, that is a pretty well cleared field to think that it's been done by course play. Um, it's pretty good. So, there you go. That is how you pick up bales using course play after the combine has been around the field. Now, let's jump over the road here and we'll have a quick look at how it is slightly different if you're using a windrower, but to all intents and purposes, the uh, principles are all the same. Right, let's jump into our windrower here. We did a little test before, so you can just see that corner there. So what we're going to do here is roll onto the edge of the field so it can be detected by course play. Um, let's pull up the course play HUD. Click on the name of the tractor. Let's go into settings here. We're going to create a job as we did before. Everything looking good there. Um, so one tool two headlands we're going to start work on the center this time rather than the headlands which is how we had it set for the combine we're going to uh, start work on the center uh, headland corners let's sh let's sharpen these off as well and see what happens because i'm interested to show you how it can pick up the uh, bales with a sharp corner as well so let's hit generate fieldwork course there we go now let's just go back out let's just check it it's looking good there um now as you can see, our start point is in the middle of the field, not on the edge of the field. So let's roll up to it, get somewhere near organised to help ourselves out. And now I'm just going to hit the go button. We'll unfold the windrower. Now, I think it's important to state here as well. Make sure your windrower is one that gives you a central uh, swath at the end of it. If it dispenses it to side this won't work so just be mindful of that so if it's one that can uh, swath to the left or the right and the center make sure it's set to center so that you uh, don't have any issues because if it's set to the right or left the uh, the baler won't pick it up because remember we're treating the baler in, in this instance i think we're treating the baler as about eight meters wide um but the swath is in the center so it will pick it up so there we go, things are looking good now. The reason for doing the centres first, because you've got opportunity when you're windrowing, is one, you get nice, neat um, headlands around the field, but two, when you come to bale, you're going to bale the centre of the field first, which means there are no rogue bales sitting on the outside of the, the field that you can crash into. Um, so it just works a little bit nicer. Obviously, with a combine, you've got to cut your headlands out to get to the centre of the field. But um, when you're windrowing, slightly easier um, you're just driving over the grass that you're going to windrow up later on as well now you could if you wanted to go into your combine course and change it from headlands to uh, centers if you want you want to do this the method uh, but i tend to not bother uh, the chances of crashing into a bale are every now and again then it's not a huge issue so uh, and as you saw with the field there it just knocks the bale out of the way so uh, in the in the rare occasions it does happen um it doesn't seem to cause any issues. So we'll let this windrower finish the course here and then we will get the baler going. 
Right, we're coming up to the last uh, headland here, and you can see how the sharper corners has worked out. We've got uh, much cleaner um, turns there, which should benefit us when we're using the baler. As you can see, nice, neat rows again. Um, it's done a great job, this, actually. So, let's pull up course play here. We're going to copy the course again. We're not going to save it this time. We showed you how to do that with the combines. What we'll do here, we will just copy the course, because we know that we're going to not need this course beyond uh, this little tutorial here. So, let's move the windrower to there, power it down. Let's jump into the bale now. I've used the little round bale here as well just to show the difference in balers. Um, you can see we're green here, so we'll paste that um, and we'll move it just into the field so it gets started. Now, you don't need to do anything with the baler either. Automatic drop and things like that will just happen automatically. Um, Courseplay picks that up and it's basically just a case of hitting the go button. Right, we're off and running. I did um, manage to not set it to first waypoint and I had it on... Uh, nearest waypoint when we started so it started to go down one of the headlands because it was closer to that but now you can see we are into the field and we're running nicely on the first of the up and down rows and it's leaving the two headlands to the side there until the end so we're getting through quite a lot of bales here as well because it's a smaller baler but as you can see the automatic drop working and um, again we'll just leave this to run until it's done let's turn on the course again so you can see What's happening? Let's get our angles right. We're basically running slightly off centre here. I don't know why that is, but it's running. It's actually picking up the swath in the centre. Might just be the angle I'm looking at it. But uh, everything working as intended. So we'll let it push on and uh, see what it looks like as we get towards the end of the field. I do want to come back when we get into the corners as well, so you can see the sharp corners and how we're. How it leaves less grass on the ground than we did when we were doing the combine. So here we go. We're going to end up on the corner here. And what's going to happen is it's going to roll up to the end of the pass here. Like so. It's picked up all of that grass. Now it's going to reverse, get itself lined up. Now the, the only difference between doing this and rounded edges is it does take a little bit longer. Your field will take just a little bit longer to clear, but actually will give you a cleaner finish if that's what you're looking for. So look now, lining itself up, reversing back to pick up the end of this swath, um, and we should get a relatively clean finish. There is a bit of a clump there, so depending on the uh, pickup header on the baler, there you go, that's not bad at all, is it? Just a tiny little bit left. But that uh, should happen now all the way around the field, and we should have a really nice, nicely cleared field at the end of it. Right, another sharp headland coming up here, so I thought I'd let it run, and you can see it again, how clean it is. There we go. Finishes the uh, upward row, and now it's going to run along the top. And you can see the slowness here, rather than just whipping around that corner, it has to uh, stop and gradually reverse. So it'll just reverse to the end of the swath now, hopefully. May leave a little bit behind. There you go. Getting dropped down. You can see it has left a tiny little bit, but way less than it did in the combine field. And there we go. That's us. One headland to go. So there we go, that is the last headland just about finished there. Very simple, like I said. I know I've gone into a little bit of detail on this and let it run so you can see the results, but uh, to all intents and purposes, make sure you save your combine course or your windrow course, or at least copy and paste them over, and you're basically duplicating those courses for your baler. And you can see the results here. Look at that, I mean, there's barely a blade of grass that hasn't been picked up on the windrow course. A little bit more on the combine course because we did uh, the rounded edges but if you went for sharp edges there you would have the same result as well so um very very handy and slick way of doing it and i have to say i use this quite a lot because it is so consistent and so reliable so i hope that helps and from me the farm sim guy thank you very much for watching and i will see you again very soon take care bye for now